Where is Greta? What's happened to the cult of Greta Thunberg? And this is actually good news, kind of. But for some reason, not reported. Now, Greta Thunberg, as you know, was once hotter than Jesus Christ for young salvation seekers. The Joan of Arc of global warming. But just like that, the Thunberg cult seems finished. In fact, I, all, I feel I almost have to remind you how big she was only recently. Thunberg became a, an international star, a spiritual leader, really, a, a guru of global warming at just 16 years of age, one year after starting a school strike for climate movement in Sweden. And I do mean a spiritual leader. One parish of the Church of Sweden even anointed her a successor to Christ. The Pope shook her hand, praised her. Look, the hysteria around it was incredible. She was Time Magazine's Person of the Year, nominated three times for a Nobel Peace Prize. But most importantly, politicians couldn't get enough of her. They used her to show they were in touch with the young. They were in touch with global warming, with the panic that she'd helped unleash. And, of course, they found it particularly useful because, you know, when the left got her to say her stuff on global warming, you know, it's a crisis, uh, the house is burning, we're doomed, got to panic. Well, any adult that dared to criticise this hysterical and disturbed message, this disturbed child, really, they looked like a bully. They got howled down. And so you had so many politicians of the left inviting this unsmiling and uncompromising schoolgirl everywhere. Thunberg addressed France's National Assembly. She addressed the very exclusive World Economic Forum at Davos. I am here to say our house is on fire. Thunberg addressed the European Union's Environment Committee. She personally lectured the United Nations Secretary General. Uh, he loved it. I mean, he, he got the cameras in to show him being lashed by a 16-year-old. And she famously raged at the 2019 United Nations Climate Action Summit. How dare you? You have stolen my dreams and my childhood with your empty words. They stole her childhood that made her a superstar. This mere child, full of rage, obsessed with doom, totally devoid of any practical solutions. Yet here she was lecturing the world on how to fuel their advanced 21st century economies. And then, flip, where did she go? Have you seen her? Her biggest gig this year was just a lousy appearance at the Glastonbury Festival, where she raged yet again against fossil fuels and politicians. They can say that we are in a climate emergency as they open up new coal mines, new oil fields and new pipelines. That was her biggest appearance of the year. But almost no newspaper bothered to report what she said. And I think the timing explains why. This is not a coincidence. It seems to me Thunberg is now a victim of her own success in scaring people into doing very, very stupid things for the climate that we're now paying for, and paying for big time. For instance, in 2019, at the height of the Thunberg mania, this 16-year-old instructed British politicians, including then Labour leader Jeremy Corbyn, not to allow fracking in their country or any more gas, oil and coal projects. The UK's active current support of new exploitations of fossil fuels, like for example the UK shale gas fracking industry, the expansion of this North Sea oil gas industry. <laughs> the expansion of airports, as well as the planning commission for a brand new coal mine, is beyond absurd. Did you hear me? Yes. <laughs> Is my English okay? Yes. yes, 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 they cheered. I mean, really, it just it just blew my mind sometimes to see adults kowtowing to this mere child. But what was worse 
but that they actually did just as she wished. Her agenda was their agenda. They were totally on the same page. So, in Britain, fracking was indeed banned. No new coal mines were opened. And Britain's Conservative government under Boris Johnson, it pledged that country to net zero emissions by 2050. But, <laughs> colour me surprised, taking advice from a 16-year-old extremist on how to power a 21st century economy turns out to be as disastrous as it was absurd. I mean, you look now. Like most of the world, Britain now has an energy crisis. It is a crisis so serious that energy industry analyst Cornwall Insight predicts average electricity bills in Britain will reach £4,200 by January, or $5,000 US, $5,000 a year for your electricity. Now, prices like that, many Britons are not going to be able to afford to heat their homes next winter. And many hundreds of the elderly could very well die. And to make it worse, there are also warnings that there could be blackouts next winter and rationing of power, with some companies already forced to shut operations to keep on the lights at home during shortages of electricity. That's forced the woman who is tipped to take over as Prime Minister from Boris Johnson next month to promise now to drop that ban on fracking, to get more oil and gas out of the North Sea, to end this crisis. It's a reversal of everything Tunberg was demanding. I support fracking in areas where there is local support. And what I would also do, if selected as Prime Minister, is make sure we're using the resources in the North Sea. And it's much the same story in Europe. Places like Germany, it's reopening coal-fired power generators. Indeed, the whole world is suddenly desperately short of the fossil fuels that Greta Thunberg raged against, said they didn't need. And many politicians have once courted her. Well, now they don't. They're too busy desperately finding more of the coal and the gas and the oil. She told them to scrap. They don't want to, they don't want to be standing next to them screaming, stop. They're now trying to save their people from the consequences of the global warming madness that Greta Thunberg helped to promote, unleash, inspire. And Thunberg's Twitter feed now reflects her fall. She retweets pictures of supporters around the world, but it's like, you know, one person here, maybe a dozen there in India. Really, it's all a bit yesterday. And in a post on the weekend, Thunberg complained they're not even listening to her at home. She said, I started striking from school on August 20th, 2018, ahead of the Swedish general election. It's now been four years since then, and a new election is on its way. We are still here, but the climate crisis is still absent from the debate. No surprise there. No surprise there that Thunberg's voice isn't welcome in Sweden, because Sweden also now has an energy crisis. Power bills soaring. It's turned to burning oil again to keep on the lights, keep them on even in Tumberg's home. How the poor in Sweden are coping, I do not know. The Tumberg cult is over. Unfortunately, the damage it caused still remains.